<laughs> Never been any like Denny McLean, and it is our pleasure to welcome Denny McLean to the Shoreline Sport and Spine of Power Hour. Denny, it's been an adventure, but we finally made the connection. Hey, thanks for hanging in there with us, and uh, it's a pleasure having you on the show. Well, it's my pleasure. Thank you very much for calling. Well, Danny, um, let's uh, go. Uh, you know, a lot of people have, uh, you know, kind of talk about trivia records and baseball records and things like that. And I'll tell you, the one record that I don't think will ever be broken is your 30 win season, just the way that uh, baseball is structured now with the, with the pitchers and things like that. Do you agree? Well, it's a different game. I mean, the, the game isn't, has little, as far as pitchers go, it has little resemblance to what happened in, the, you know, 50s, 60s, and even the 70s. Uh, you know, they changed the idea of what pitching was all about. All of a sudden, they wanted to platoon, and I call it platooning. What one guy pitch five innings, another guy pitch an inning, another guy pitch an inning, another guy pitch an inning. I mean, it really became a, an art of platooning. They can call it what they want, but uh, I think that when they did it, it really restructured the game. And I don't think it restructured it for the better. I, I think, obviously, they had to do something about the pitching because. They had when they expanded again. The dilution of the talent was so dramatically bad mm-hmm. that uh, they had to figure out some way to come up with some kind of an answer. And somehow or other, the geniuses that they are, they figured that uh, platooning these guys, putting them in every inning, was going to make the difference. Maybe. And I suspect if you just look at all the runs and home runs hit, uh, besides that and the juice, boy, they have really made it an offensive game. Maybe they're just big Denny McLean fans that made this rule and want to help preserve your record. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, there, there's it was a lot, been a lot of conversation about it, but uh, in in the middle late '60s, uh, we we really did the pitchers really did take over the game. There was no question about it. But you know, everything is cyclical. I don't care what it is, mm-hmm. and you know, they weren't willing to ride this out because um, no matter who was pitching in the major leagues at the time, once you went to expansion. That was the end of anybody being in control of anything. And uh, unfortunately, they weren't willing to wait. So they, have, they got themselves all, the, and literally the owners got themselves all hundreds of millions of dollars more. And the players, of course, did rather well, too. But the bottom line, the game changed forevermore. Sure has. I'll tell you, Danny, from 1965 when you were the the Tigers, you were drafted, uh, born in Chicago, drafted by the White Sox. And before I get to kind of your your stats, i got to ask, I know in Chicago there are either Cubs fans or White Sox fans. Were you a a Cubby or a a White Sox fan growing up? Uh, Born and raised a Cub fan. Had I mentioned the word White Sox in my house, (laughs) my father would have knocked my head off out of woken up in Des Moines, Iowa. So, um, so what's, what's yeah, the bottom? The bottom line is we were we were Cup fans, period. And, and you know the majority of the people who lived in Chicago. Um, I don't know what the what the percentages would be, but I can tell you based upon everything I know, if, if it's fifty one forty nine or if it's sixty forty, the majority of people are Cup fans in the Chicago area. I don't think there's any question. So, having said that, now you're drafted in the amateur draft by the White Sox. Uh, what's the reaction? Well, back then we didn't have a draft, actually. Oh, okay. um, the, the teams came to you and bid on your capabilities as they saw fit. And uh, I had uh, four or five clubs that were after me at the time, the Milwaukee Braves, of course, still in business, uh, the um, uh, Chicago White Sox, the Chicago Cubs, uh, and uh, the New York Yankees. And, I, and my idol growing up was Mickey Mantle. I mean, that was, that was everybody's idol growing up during our era. You know, he hit from the left and the right side, hit nothing but home runs, could run like a deer. I mean, all of the things that you wanted to be, Mickey Mantle was with the New York Yankees, and he played in New York. So um, when the Whites, when the New York Yankee scout came to our house, um, he uh, sat down in the living room. My mother invited him in, of course, and uh, he had come over to give us a check for $10,000. And when he crossed his – and he came in a big black Cadillac, Beautiful blue suit with a dark blue tie, white shirt, I mean, impeccably dressed. But when he crossed his legs, he had a big hole in the bottom of his shoe. And my mother, being Polish, uh-huh. my, my mother, everything to the Poles uh, in Poland, my mother's mother came from Poland, uh, everything had to do with shoes. I mean, nobody had shoes. You know, they had just gone through World War II. Sure. They had all of the horror. And uh, the big thing there was, geez, if you had a pair of shoes, a good pair of shoes, you were the king and the queen. So when she saw this guy cross his legs and saw a hole in the bottom of his shoes, she figured if the Yankees can't pay this man to have a good pair of shoes, what are they going to do to my son? 
so she literally, over the next 10 minutes, escorted him out the house. Hell, he didn't know what had hit him. I didn't know what had hit him. Not much knew that the hole in the, hole in the shoe had anything to do with it. Oh, and man. We're all looking at, and we're all looking at her when, when it all happened. I, and after he left, I said, Mom, the guy just took $10,000. What are you doing? Uh-huh. She says he had a hole. Do you think that check was really good? <laughs> oh, that's good point. I mean, Good and point. so about an hour later, the White Sox showed up. The farm director at the time was uh, Dwayne Miller and Mr. Short, who was a general manager. And they brought the same check for $10,000, but they both had good shoes on, and I signed with the White Sox. There you go. You eventually wound up, for, for our sake, over here in Michigan with the Tigers. And from 65 yep. to 69, you put together just an amazing string, uh, 108 wins during that time frame. Um, and uh, it was uh, you know that that team that's that that team during the years. I mean that that was a very good Detroit Tiger team. I mean you won it all in '68, but '67 you wind up in one of the I think still one of the greatest pennant races ever. I think of four or five teams involved in it back in the days of you know uh, you had uh, just this, we didn't have divisional baseball. Sure. You're all in one league, right. and it went down to the the right. final year of the season. Let's go back to the '67 season. Now you could have won 20 that year, but you have an injury to I believe what uh, your your foot, and that caused a little bit of controversy didn't it yeah i mean there were uh, there was never has there been more stories and errors and stories than there was over my foot and as, as simply put i fell off when i was getting off the couch my foot was sound asleep and i stepped on it sideways and then i tore all the ligaments or the tendons whatever the hell it was uh-huh. but uh, that's what happened to my foot but what happened there was it, it happened just at the end of august or the first week in september and i didn't get to pitch the rest of the month and if I pitched the rest of the month in September, we win the pennant. We probably win it by a couple of games. I mean, I'd already won 17 right. and uh, win it another couple. Two or, hell, all I had to do was win one more, we'd have won the damn thing. Yeah, exactly. So um, I, tried to, I tried to pitch the, the, uh, the last game of the season, but I couldn't step on my foot. So it was really futile. But, uh, no, we should have won it 67, too. We, we had some club, I'll tell you. And uh, when they made the few changes they did in the winter of 67, uh, we knew we really had the tiger by the tail, so to speak. And, uh, of course, in 68, we win it. And after uh, the 1st of August, we win it easy. The, the, De- Denny, walk us through, if you can, too, walk us through your first major league at bat. I mean, most people don't, you know, will never recall you being a home run hitter, your first major right. league at bat. You're absolutely right. And I enjoy talking about <laughs> all of the home runs, I guess. <laughs> um, the first time I was up in the major leagues, the first official at bat that I had in the major leagues, I hit a home run, and um, it was a. Uh, I think the count was either 0-1 or one and one. And there was a guy, and it was against the White Sox, by the way. And they had let me go, and of course Detroit had picked me up. So my first game in the major leagues was against the club that let me go. As a matter of fact, the manager there was uh, L. Lopez who was considered to be one of the great minds in the game of baseball. And when they released me and the Tigers picked me up, Al Lopez told me that day, he says, you know, can I give you the best advice anybody will give you? Because he says, I've got balls nobody else does. I said, sure, Mr. Lopez. He says, you probably really want to go get a job because I don't think you've got a future in baseball at all. Wow. Uh, he says, I just don't see it. And, I, you know, I was crushed. I was, here I am, 18 years old, 19 years old, and he's telling me I got no shot. And I was ready to jump off the closest bridge. Uh, so uh, the Tigers picked me up, and they did a nice dog and pony show on me the first couple of weeks after this had happened to me, and it was just wonderful. I wish the hell I could remember your question. But the bottom <laughs> line was I, I get to hit against the White Sox. I get to hit against the White Sox in my first official at bat, and the third pitch tossed to me on a, either a 2-0 count, 1-1 count, whatever it was. I hit the ball over to the left center field fence. By the way, folks, that was the last home run I hit. <laughs> well, so you can remember it anyhow, hey? But that's, 